So welcome to Eternal Forest Conversations. Um, this conversation is very special. It is with Curry. Uh, and we met with Curry probably six months ago. And uh, once I heard her amazing, inspiring, transformational story, I decided we have to have her on Eternal Forest Conversations. So for those who don't know much about Eternal Forest, I'll just do a super quick introduction to the project. My name is Evgeny, I'm an artist, I'm based in Portugal. I very gradually travel around the world because the, this project is calling me to go to places and meet different people and communities. The core of the project is exploring human relationship with the forests and um, yeah, our deeper connection with forests. Um, and my focus right now is creating inspiring communities, but also creating myself eternal forest sanctuaries, which are physical protected forest sanctuaries created for the communities and protected by the communities, hopefully in the next 1000 years and beyond. And we are doing this through the interaction between art, different forest sciences, ecologies, and inviting communities to step into becoming the guardians of the forests. So, um, about one and a half years ago, I started Tunnel Forest Conversations to be able to create like a critical mass of people, the community around the ideas of Eternal Forest and go deeper exploring various practices that hopefully will help, help us to have like a toolbox for connecting with the land, with trees, with nature, with insects and animals and so on. And um, at the beginning, there were more like invitations for the speakers, but gradually they became quite practical sessions which i'm really loving and this session today is one of them so i'm going to introduce perry um and really uh, you've all read the introduction i think what inspires me most of all about you curry is your multidisciplinary approach but also your hands-on approach to being with the land and uh, of course you will tell yourself the story of how you found the land or how the land found you but i do believe that the power of the land when it's calling us um, can really transform our life quite deeply but also your creative approach to working with communities with groups of people and with yourself um, including your various practices your photography which you're going to share with us today and your approach through reciprocity of being with the land and with the forest. And of course, we I'm sure all of us would love to visit your place, your amazing reserve that you are guardian of. So hopefully one day it will happen. So I'm going to share with you uh, before we start our event really quickly, just so that you have it. Um, some links that are handy for you for later uh, here in the chat and you can save them. These are just uh, some links how you can be connected to Eternal Forest and you can follow us on various channels, but also I make a quick announcement of the next event, which is 17th of November, if nothing changes. And please be very mindful about the time because we'll have speakers from very different points in the world and it will be 1 p.m. Portuguese time, more or less this time. Right now it's fixed like that. And it will be uh, main speaker, Yasmin Ostendorf. She is a curator and she will bring two amazing speakers with her talking about the role of arts in protecting and conserving forests. So it will be the 17th of November. And yes, with this, I would like to pass on to Kari. I don't want to take more of our time. It's quite a full on program today. And she will lead us into the beautiful forest exploration. Thank you so much, Evenya. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, excellent. <laughs> Thank you, Evenya, for inviting me to share my story uh, as part of this eternal forest conversation. Uh, today I'll be sharing with you my journey of feeling on the land and finding my place among trees. Uh, first, I want to welcome each and every one of you and all that you bring to our time to together today. Multiple identities, abilities, struggles, and everything that makes you unique. Welcome. And I also extend a welcome to your houseplant, 
stone, pine cone, or perhaps a view of a tree out the window. I also extend a welcome. I'm speaking to you from the forest here where I live without running water, electricity, uh, among thousands of trees, flowing water, and wild roaming moose, yes, bear, wolves, and lynx. I wish to begin by expressing my deepest gratitude to the first peoples, the Anishinaabe Algonquin peoples, who were the original caretakers of this land. I feel their presence when I step outside in the middle of the night and I am embraced by a sea of stars above me. I live in recognition of the healing powers of this land as well as its history of being a home to those who accepted the deep commitment to living out a reciprocal relationship with all beings of the forest. Um, and I don't know if you want to show a slide. Um, it, it's up to you. Um, we can show some slides or I can just speak, Evenya. I can show some slides. That okay, yeah, that, that way you can see some uh, photographs of the uh, different aspects of the land here. I think your photos are really beautiful, so I think we should show them. <laughs> One second. Here we go. You can see I, my screen now, yes? Yeah, yeah. And you can you can go on to the next one. Um, I endeavor to live with reverence and care here on the Eco Wisdom Forest Preserve by uh, committing to a, an off-grid lifestyle, uh, a, a lifestyle of service that is conscious, contemplative, and creative. The forest has made me whole uh, with its moment-to-moment -moment invitations to live both mindfully and compassionately. And what I offer to others through programs such as this is simply a reflection of what has been made possible through the nurturing I have received from the forest. And it brings me great joy to share with you the gentle wisdom of the forest today. Um, maybe we'll move on to the next uh, slide. Um, the telling of my story, um, in the telling of my story, I will endeavor to illustrate how I came to live on this uh, land uh, in this forest. Uh, with this deep desire to build an eco-wisdom community, both virtually and in person, of like-minded and like-hearted people who care for the earth. I also hope to demonstrate the depth of my commitment to providing accessible nature wellness programs that are inclusive of people regardless of their constellation of abilities and disabilities. The forest made me whole, and it is my pleasure to share my process with you in hopes that you too may find a place among trees. We can move on to another couple of slides. <laughs> After suddenly acquiring a multi-system neurologic disability, I spent years unable to easily sit upright walk, or talk. I relied upon someone pushing me in a wheelchair, but I spent most of my time in bed, in pain, and socially isolated. People who had once been a part of my life, uh, many just didn't know how to be with me. And for years I underwent many essential medical treatments. However, it was ultimately the contemplative time in nature where I could integrate attending to mind, body, and soul. Here, I was able to experience true well-being, alone and in community, communities of compassion. Mine is a story of deep listening and learning to receive the nurturing of the earth. Today, I will introduce you to several of the contemplative practices. In a moment, I will be guiding you in a meditation with houseplants. 
Um, and these practices I have used to braid together my holistic healing with spiritual development and creative expression. My story will touch upon themes of pain, emptiness, and sorrow, as well as accompaniment, discernment, and trust. And finally, beauty, awe, and transformation. It illustrates the power of building a community that recognizes strength in interdependence and the value of reciprocal care. And now I would like to guide you in a brief meditation with your house plant. You will notice that I will offer alternatives to be inclusive of people of all abilities and also to offer choice so that you can discern which approach feels most right for you in this moment. These alternatives are not lesser than practices. And in fact, I invite those with full mobility to consider engaging in these alternatives as they can be quite powerful. So as I sit here with my piece of moss and you with your house plant, I will guide you in two practices. One will focus on breath and the other on visualization. I invite you to settle into a posture that is both relaxed and yet alert. If it's possible, you can have your feet on the ground to help uh, connect you with the earth. I invite you to take several long, slow breaths. And as you do this, and you can have your eyes open or closed or downward with a downward gaze, whatever you choose, whatever is most comfortable. As you do this, I, I invite you to imagine the carbon dioxide flowing from your lungs to your house plant. and also the oxygen that you're breathing in from your house plant. And through these several slow breaths in and out, we can attend to this understanding and appreciation for our interdependence. And now I will lead you in a visualization exercise, an alternative for connecting with your house plant. We begin with a sense of the body and feeling grounded to the earth, recognizing our skin as a boundary. And once we feel that settledness and that connection to our body, you're invited then to expand that field of awareness to embrace and include your house plant. And then bring it back to yourself, your body, recognizing your skin as a boundary. And once again, extending that field of awareness to include and embrace your house plant. And then returning the awareness back to the body. And through this process, we can also come to understand and appreciate our interdependence. Whichever method you choose, and you're welcome to continue with this practice as I continue to say a few words, we can bring to mind ways that your house plant cares for you and the ways that you care for your house plant, ensuring that it has enough sunlight and water. In this practice, I also find it helpful to recall the words of Robin Wall Kimmerer 
an indigenous biologist, who reminds us of the animism within the beans of the forest, whether that is plant, tree, rock, or water. Trees and, and houseplants can offer us powerful accompaniment. I invite you to reach out and touch or visually take in your plant at any point during the telling of my story, especially if you find anything difficult. Let it ground you, nurture you, as you build upon your relationship today. In the company and comfort of your houseplant, I trust that you will be able to receive both the pain and the beauty that exists within this story. And now I invite you to come back into the present moment. You can wiggle your fingers and your toes. You can look around your space to help bring you back. You can give yourself a stretch. And now, my story. As an arbitrary frame of reference for understanding my story, I will say that my life can be divided into two parts. Before and after I acquired a severe disability. Today I will be focusing on the final stages of a long and difficult journey to finding well-being and wholeness. My life changed overnight. I had graduated with a PhD in record time, receiving an award from the Royal Society of Canada, given to the top female emergent scholar, landed the first tenure stream academic position uh, in my discipline in the country, and held a fellowship with the Canadian Institutes of Health Research. I had a national research program and was a temporary advisor to the World Health Organization. One day I was traveling and speaking at a conference, and the next I was immobilized in chronic, severe pain 24-7. Not a moment, not a second without pain. Unable to walk. I also had great difficulty talking, remembering, and reading. As you can imagine, this was a great time of loss. I went from being a professor of disability studies with an interest in the role of personal support workers in the enacting of citizenship and, and full community engagement to requiring personal support workers myself for very basic activities of daily living. Um, I do have a slide, Evenya, of the next uh, part of my talk about ticks. You see, my colleague and I went to an ecotourism resort after a conference presentation. For, for, we went there for a few days of much needed rest. She and I slept in this canvas walled cabana, large enough for two beds and a few pieces of furniture. Unfortunately, it was infested with ticks, only we did not recognize them as such. The resort had just changed ownership the day we arrived, and there was obvious confusion amongst the new staff about how to undertake a wide range of duties. Uh, we saw three staff enter our cabana with an insecticide as indicated by the bulb and the tube and the spray nozzle. Approximately 24 hours Later, my colleague and I became severely ill. As it turned out, we had both been exposed not only to Lyme disease and co-infections carried by the ticks, but also by the neurotoxic pesticide that was used. The spray has now been banned since it has been linked to families on tropical vacation, dying in their sleep 
and others developing permanent neurologic disability. I consulted many medical professionals. However, it took over three years to diagnose the Lyme disease and over 10 years to uncover the neurologic, the neurotoxic uh, exposure. The delay in diagnosis, in addition to the complexity of multiple conditions, resulted in the development of a chronic condition with ongoing symptoms and problems with, for example, immune function. My system was, my, my situation was, was complicated by the fact that one condition interfered with the treatment of the other. So Lyme, which is a bacterial infection, requires the treatment of antibiotics. However, as a result of the pesticide exposure, several attempts to tolerate the medication resulted in anaphylaxis, a life-threatening reaction requiring urgent medical attention. And now I'm going to pause. <laughs> you know that there is a happy ending to the story. Um, I'm going to lead you now in a river meditation. We will watch this video in three phases. And this is a, a river heart practice. The first two phases um, helped us to prepare our hearts to being open. And in the third phase, if it feels comfortable, you're invited to open your heart and bring in what is needed and nourishing. So I think what I'll do is I'll play the video and guide you. I'm going to give you the framework ahead of time and then we'll have some silent time for you to engage. It'll be very clear what the three phases are. The first phase in this practice is that we'll see the water flowing away as in this image. So at this point we imagine stress releasing and flowing away from us. And in the second phase we're looking straight across the river and we might um, we might notice subtle movements in the grasses. We might connect to the sound of the water. We open our senses so that we can become connected to the present moment. And then finally, the third phase is when we look upstream and have the water coming towards us. And I should say, this is the lovely Papano Creek that runs on our property here at the Eco Wisdom Forest Preserve. And when you're in that final state, stage of opening your heart, if and when it feels comfortable to do so, the idea is that you bring in whatever it is that might be soothing to you. It might be um, you're desiring an emotional state such as peace, or a physical state such as relaxation, or something that's relational or spiritual such as love that you want to bring into your heart. This should be a pleasant experience and you're invited to notice what it feels like in your body as you receive what you need into your heart.
and you might need to um, adjust the volume. I've, I've lowered it on my end, but if it still is loud, you might need to reduce the volume on your end. We'll just see what happens. How is the volume? Okay.
I see a couple of thumbs up. How was that for people? I see some nods. Oh, good. Oh, excellent. I hope you. <laughs> thanks, Nancy. I uh, I hope you you received what what you were in need of in this moment. Thank you, Bronwyn. Um, all right. Um, whoops. So I'm going to go back to my um, story, and um, if uh, at any point, Avenia, you want to show some slides, you can do that. All right. So returning back to my story, recovery was very slow, with some conditions improving and new conditions developing. With the support of a wonderful circle of care providers, including medical doctors, a home nurse, a shiatsu massage therapist, and my dear, dear physiotherapist, I gradually relearned how to walk. It was at this point in my story, however, that I was in a car accident. I was hit by a very large, heavy truck, which nearly crushed me into a telephone pole. With a concussion and whiplash, my specialist informed me that I was at risk of a full relapse, which for me would mean a return to chronic severe pain and a reliance on a variety of mobility aids. It was at this time I entered into a period of deep listening, asking myself, what do I need in order to heal? And I'm just going to pause here and invite you to say the, the same question to yourself right now. What do I need in order to heal? Whether that healing is physical, emotional, or spiritual. This was a process that some might refer to as spiritual discernment, really going deep into essential questions related to my existence. And I gave myself permission to do whatever I needed to take care of myself. And the message I received was that I needed to go on silent retreat in nature. I spent several years going away on retreat, stepping away from the stimulation of the urban environment and entering into natural spaces in silence. And this is where and when I discovered ways of directly receiving from and offering to the trees and plants of the natural world without a need for language. This practice of going on retreat led me to a two-year program in spiritual direction with a focus on contemplative nature connection practices. And now, jumping ahead in my story, my partner, an environmental educator, and I found a piece of land with an off-grid cabin our plan was to establish a forest preserve and move here when he retired. However, when the pandemic hit, my healthcare providers recommended that I stay up here. Um, okay, we'll just pause on the, on the footprints there, okay, Avenia, because I've got a story coming up about the tracks. Um, thanks. Um, and so here we were up at the cabin and we were originally coming up for a one week of adventure during March break and we ended up coming up and just never, never leaving. Um, uh, my partner has gone back and forth and um, I have done less of that because I continue to get severe migraines in the city. So I'm quite content to live here in the forest. <laughs> Fortunately, we had enough wood to get us through the cold months of March, April and May. And over time we installed installed two large solar panels and purchased a backup generator for emergency and we installed a second rainwater collection tank for summer water source and yes in the winter we go out and melt the snow on our wood stove it's been quite an adventure 
The Eco Wisdom Forest Preserve is located close to Algonquin Park in Ontario, Canada. Our off-grid cabin is on 200 acres with adjacent crown land making it an excellent habitat for moose, wolves, lynx and other anim animals. I have to say that they were very curious about the new arrivals, these humans, and I have a couple of stories to share with you about that. <clears throat> One night I was here alone at the cabin and I hadn't organized my day properly so it was like 10 o'clock and pitch black and I'd gone out to collect snow into a big pot that I would then put on the wood stove and I had a headlamp and I was there shoveling snow into this big pot and um, doing a couple of other tasks that had to be done outside and then I came indoors and the next morning I went out and there were wolf tracks following every single place that I had been and um, now when you when you live in the forest it becomes second nature to be able to read tracks so here is a, a slide of some some tracks and you'll notice for example that lynx are on the left and then there's a moose track and then it's wolf wolf, wolf tracks beside that but anyway um, uh, back to the story so so I was out there in the morning and I'm realizing this wolf didn't even, didn't just follow my every move but it was around the same time like just after I'd gone in that it had come out and the way I could read that was the amount of snow that had come down overnight over on my tracks were about the same as what had come down on the wolf's tracks so I could tell uh, that yeah it was uh, you know and it made me think that the wolf was probably, she was probably there watching me as I was doing my tasks, leaving me alone, not bothering me. Um, but uh, this is when I came to truly understand that we were the visitors on their land. Another example of uh, living with animals, um, I guess, you know, one is here I am uh, close to the bear uh, area. <laughs> um, I, I trusting that they'll hear my voice and just keep their distance. But uh, another one is um, the chickadees in the winter. Um, uh, they uh, we we um, we have a, a pocket full of seed uh, sunflower seeds. When we go off on the trails, they follow us. And when they when we notice them, we pause and we put out our hand, and they come down and they they feed. And so I was doing one of our accessible nature wellness programs. I was outside, it was in the snow. I was offering the tea as we so often do uh, as we conclude our programs, offering t uh, tea, uh, cedar tea, actually it was white pine tea to the earth. And so I was doing this with my left hand and then I noticed the birds coming. So I just sunk my hand, my right hand into the pocket and it pulled out some seed and they were very polite about it. You know, they would come, one would come and select a seed and then fly off. And then another would come and sit on my thumb maybe and select a seed and fly off in this direction. And so all of this was going on as I was doing the tea ceremony. And so it just, it, um, and people started saying, are, are those birds, what's going on there? And uh, it's like, that's what happens when you live in the forest uh, with, with the animals. It, it's, a, it's a lovely way of being. It has been over a year and a half now using mindful and contemplative nature practices on the Eco Wisdom Forest Preserve. And I have found great relief from chronic migraines, headaches that continue to inca incapacitate me when I'm in ur urban environments. Um, this in turn has led me to opportunities with the support of many talented co-facilitators to offer accessible nature wellness programs that welcome people from around the world of all abilities. Our model is one that incorporates nature's lessons of interdependence where I can both receive and offer support to others. And it is also based on circles of compassion for self and one another in community and of course the ecosystem that we are a part of 
that includes the trees, the water, stone, thousands of trees and animals too. It is our honor to live lightly upon the earth in this way as it is an act of kindness to ourselves as well as to the earth. And now I'd like to, um, I think maybe we'll stop screen share and I will lead you in um, a, a final uh, set of practices. The first one is a body earth prayer or practice. It will help us to get grounded in the present moment. And the second is a contemplative photography practice. And so they, they go together and I'm going to walk you through them. And so, and then you'll have 10 minutes uh, to go off on your own and explore and play with this. Play with the first practice and then the second practice. Um, so uh, the key to contemplative photography is to experience present moment awareness and then wait with a sense of receptivity to see if an aha moment or an awe-filled perception comes to you. Um, and this should be associated with a pleasant feeling. And you can settle into this feeling in your body and then take out your camera and try to capture the entire embodied experience of wonder that comes. So we begin with the, uh, the body earth uh, practice which is three steps. I am here. Those are the three words. And there, I'm going to provide some alternatives. So, um, uh, um, <clears throat> one alternative is to use eye movement. When we say I, we look straight ahead. And when we say am, we look up. And when we say here, we look down to the earth. We can also use our arms to connect to the body. I am, I'm going to try to lean back so you can see. And then it's a gentle bringing the, the hands down, palms up to the, to the earth, down to the, towards the earth, but gentle with the, um, the palms up here. I am here and you can play with this you can do it seated but I enjoy doing this outside and and incorporating some level of movement for example one step and then I and then another step am and then another step here and so I invite you to go outside if you're able or look outside or just connect with your house plant in a seated position and, and, and practice I am here connecting to the meanings of the words so you know I connecting with you in this moment and am the miracle of being here and then here the earth that grounds and connects all of us and holds us I am here. And so at this point I'd like to, um, uh, unless there are questions, uh, I would like to invite you just to take uh, maybe 10 minutes, 8 or 10 minutes. Is that okay, Evenya? Okay. Yes, it's great. Uh, Carrie, just a quick clarification question. So I understand that there is a possibility for people to perhaps step outside for 10 minutes do this grounding pro process, grounding practice, and then to um, take out their camera and do contemplative photography. Is that? Yeah, so the idea with contemplative photography is that you wait until something comes to you. Okay. So in the 10 minute period that you're outside, if you're taking 25 pictures, you know you're not really doing the practice the way it's intended. But so, so the idea is that you, you do, I am here, 
I am here. And that just helps you to be really connected to the moment. And when we're still and connected to the earth and the moment, then we can, be, we can um, develop an ability to be um, receptive to unique perceptions. And a lot of artists use a similar process of immersing themselves in nature in this contemplative way before picking up a paintbrush. So it's the same thing. We, we engage in this practice and then we wait and as we look around we might see a strand of light like, like oh, this <laughs> coming down and saying, ah, oh, I feel that in my body. It, it feels like wonder. Now how would I, I capture that? You feel it first, you experience it first, and then you pull out your camera and try to take a picture of it. Is I'll just say a couple of uh, concluding comments. Fantastic. And then we'll give people a, a moment to sort of settle back and then we'll pose the question again in like one minute. Okay, so have that mind, have that question in your mind. Sound okay, Avenya? Okay. So my, my experience, uh, you know, on this land and um, I should say uh, a number of things occurred that really shouldn't have occurred, that did occur, uh, that allowed uh, us to find and, um, and acquire this, uh, this land for the purpose of a forest preserve. And um, Ivenia referred to the, the moment uh, when we realized that we belong to this land. And we had gone swimming actually in that river that you saw in the river meditation. And it was a hot day and we just went for a swim and we came out and we just we had no idea how we were going to acquire the, the property but we just knew that we belonged here and uh, just taking that that, that belief uh, we just moved forward and moved forward and, and remained open and it was just kind of a series of unlikely events and then here we are <laughs> And I should say that, um, you know, while my story, like most people's stories, it, you know, it includes loss, um, but it also includes hope and creativity and all these lessons that we, we get from the earth about renewal and regeneration and the value of rewilding. Um, and so I hope for you that, you know, with these practices and through my story, it just might um, support you in finding your still point moments these moments uh, of connection with nature, deep connection, um, where you can take care of yourself and build your resiliency and then find your own personal path for caring for the earth. Um, in, in the forest here, I've not only experienced this integrated sense of mind, body, soul, well-being, but also a tremendous sense of joy. And it's my sincerest wish that um, I've been able to communicate that living with reverence and respect for Mother Earth can lead us to a place of belonging among trees. All right, now, Avenya has a question. Would you like to go into small groups or have an open group share? We can also uh, stay here because we're actually quite a small group. So it might also be possible that we don't break out because it's also quite disruptive. And the I feel like the energy is quite good. Just imagining we're a circle, starting with curry and just going around, sitting in the same forest or connecting also all of the places where we are. Um, so yeah, so maybe we can just share in this circle um, what you know what what resonated with you when you went out and what did you capture what um what draw your attention what draw your your heart to maybe capture a moment and if you want to share just maybe unmute yourself and go for it and if you can um attach photo in the chat or just show on your phone you can also do that
Well, what caught my eye was a, a leaf. And as I was getting myself positioned, another leaf fell right on top of me, right in front of my camera. <laughs> so I took it too. I have to get it off my camera to show you though. I'll find it. Hi, my name is Kim. Can you see what I just screen share? A picture of the mushrooms? Beautiful. Yep. Well, I took these not today, but yesterday. Um, and I just, I've never seen red mush, these mushrooms before. I found them in my local park and I didn't know whether I could eat them or not. I did Google it and it looks, I, it wasn't a good idea to eat them after all, but it just kind of reminded me of our interdependence with nature. And um, um, since I met Carrie, I spent a lot more time in the local park, listening to the birds, the sights and the sounds. And there's just a sense of calmness when we breathe the same air and I try to immerse myself in some of the past as much as I can and look for new things. And um, it, it's, it gives me a sense of calm and patience. Thank you so much, Kim. Somehow I can't find that photograph. <laughs> um, but if I may comment on the river meditation, I was um, thinking, oh, what am I going to think? And what am I going to think? And I thought, I just won't think anything. And I was pretty surprised at what just, it just came to me as I was watching it. And it was really moving. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you, Laurel. Thank you. I, I would like to say something. And I would like to start by thanking you. Um, your story, your various stories, but especially uh, your line story and your situation. Um, deeply, deeply, deeply moved me. I've got my own story in relation to that. So I, I thank you um, because you took me elsewhere. Um, and so I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, that's the first thing I wanted to say. Um, now, thank you to you as well, Evgenia, um, for this wonderful work that you are doing, for bringing people together that um, have got something to share, something deep, something meaningful, something where we can and we are all interconnected but this re-emphasizes this interconnect interconnection so thank you okay i i took a photograph actually after i did your beautiful uh meditative um exercise i took a photograph of my plant here uh, which is here beside me. I didn't go outside because I actually felt that this plant was really talking to me and, and it was connecting me to you and you to me and all of you here. So um, it, it's, it's basically, um, I, I actually couldn't share it, but anyway, I focused on, on the top bit um, where, um, Maybe, I don't know if you can see it, but maybe um, where, where there, is, um, there is a new leaf here, a new leaf, because I think a new leaf is very, very symbolic. So I just thank you once again. Beautiful, Inesh, thank you so much. So I would like to read uh, Nancy, she wrote on the chat, um, I guess it's easier for us to just read it. Uh, this is my experience. I'm here. I see the vibrant fall colors of nature around me. Red, orange, deep, deep green, and it's raining. I see people walking by, sheltered by their umbrellas, and I'm here, inside. 
It's cozy and warm. I'm here, alone, present with my visually magnificent views. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you so much for writing this. It's, it's almost like a poem. <laughs> it's wonderful. It is a poem. <laughs> someone else would like to go um yes i would like to i'm mary i i don't have the zoom feature to see anything um i was sitting here thinking about everyone going outside but i i can't right now and um i picked up a leaf yesterday well quite a few beautiful leaves and i put them in the telephone book as usual to press but one of them was left out and i was reading about frac Dr. Greenway's book, and um, and I looked at the back, and you can see the veins and everything. It's and even today, it still smells like the earth. Amazing. So it's become a friend uh, to me. And um, and also, while I was waiting, I was looking at my phone from pictures that I've taken this year uh, of the deer outside my windows, the barred owl sitting there, the the great horned owl up in a tree. I live on in, uh, for, in a forest. And um, I just, I've lived here 58 years and it's just kept me alive and, and vibrant and wonderful. And um, I mean, feeling wonderful. And um, so just looking at the pictures was great, looking back at them. And also a sleeping deer below my kitchen window where um, they sleep and cover up half of their, because they're leaning over sleeping, their head is, and, and therefore they don't get as much much oxygen, uh, which and they sleep better, I've learned. And also a picture of a mother with two just newborn fawns out on my front lawn. Well, it's called a lawn. And, um, and it's wonderful. She came the day before she had them and came, oh, within 20 feet of me. We, I talked with her softly, and the babies were born within hours, and I have a series of... So thank you for having me look this over again. And I wanted to tell you that coming this week is, next week is my birthday, so I have invited the family to come to Forest Bathe. So I'm very excited about that. <laughs> Excellent, excellent, Mary. Happy Thank you coming so birthday. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Yasmin raised hand. Hello, Yasmin. And um, we're in Cyprus right now, where Kenya was just three days ago. And in, thank you, Kari, for your for your anecdote and your experience and your stories. I connected personally today with the moon. Um, I went to the balcony and we have right now this beautiful full moon in quick silvery colors and the clouds were making this ring around the moon. And it was just so beautiful and I feel deeply connected with, with that landscape. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I just, yeah, uh, so I had a similar day with the moon. And it really was very grand. Uh, so, with the moon, flowers with the moon. Mm. Um, so I felt really inspired by the contemplative photography exercise because it was just so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Joanna. Yeah, I would like to say it's, it's very dark outside, so I did not really see anything. And I started off with, I am here, but I changed my movements slightly. And in the end, I, so I was in my garden 
I said to each major tree, I am here with you. So I bowed to them. So I went along each tree and greeted them. So I found that, yeah, I felt a lot of energy inside my feet. So it was a very good experience for me. So thank you, Carrie. Thank you. And for your story as well. Very inspiring because I'm not in a in a great state of health. So I find it very inspiring to go out even more into the garden, into the woods, into the parks. So thank you very much. Thank you. And everybody else who is around here with us. Um, yeah, I live in a, a small little Portuguese village and it's, um, there's no grass, no uh, trees or any, any you know, living uh, natural uh, plant and uh, I, but so my eyes went straight up to the sky and I just really enjoyed the beautiful blue with the lovely clouds and I can't see the moon yet or I couldn't. Uh, and then I could feel the, the hard cobblestones under my bare feet, which was just a lovely grounding. And um, there are a few people around, the cars go past, so I, I was kind of not really free to um, express myself. <laughs> um, and I took photographs of this most beautiful succulent plant that I was gifted. And it's beautiful. Uh, flowers. It, it sprouted a, a long um, stem with hundreds of these, they're like flamingos heads. Um, so they, I hadn't really looked at them like that before. So thank you. And I just very, very inspired to um, move. We were looking at different pieces of land around in the area with natural forests and Looking forward to being there on Sunday where we can just be barefoot on the ground looking for the springs and the water and seeing whether that's the land we want. So thank you for inspiring me and us, Carrie and Evgenia. Ellen, I think you wanted to share something you like to just need to unmute yourself please thank you yes yes i um i'll just get my picture back it's um very dark here in the uk so uh, i knew if i i went out it would be um quite tricky but there's um we have like a veranda uh, on the outside of the the back door got some plants in there i don't know if you can see that or not but we've got a little lantern and it is just above um a group of flowers and it really lit up the colors and especially the red and it was so pretty and it just really struck me that just reminded me that you know even in the darkness and we can't see the colors they're still there and uh it was really lovely really sort of magical sort of feel just about that little space so, so thank you thank you so much Helen I did find my picture if you want to see it my camera has a little bit of a black spot in the middle of it though can you see that? I don't know if it's in focus. These, these are, that's on my screen, not the actual leaf. I, I liked after um, uh, uh, someone was talking about the new leaf and I thought, well, there's something also about the, the ones that are, that are um, changing color and living in, in a different way by 
whatever the process is that's going on, a lot of scientists, but they're beautiful too. Nice, Kim. Evenya, if people are finished, I mean, we can just check in one last time, but maybe it's time to do the tea ceremony. I think it would be wonderful. Um, I just, uh, before we do that, I wanted to say we did that before after a conversation with Rachel Corby and it worked really well. And I'd like to invite you to actually send us a little message after this conversation and maybe you can send your photo and um, yeah and tell your story just like a little paragraph with your name and your photo and if you don't mind we can also share it in the group and maybe on Instagram to let others know that we've done this practice especially when they watch the video they can also see or share it so if you're happy to do that you could just uh, send me an email I put it in the chat and yeah Thank you so much for such really, really beautiful poetic sharings. And I hope that we can all go back after this um, conversation and watch the full moon with some wonderful tea and whatever else you want to do, some magic, hopefully. <laughs> and Avenya, can you make Dave uh, the iPhone there a uh, co-host so that he can show me pouring the tea? See the iPhone there? It just says iPhone. I don't think it has his name. Already done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Kari and Dave, you are both muted for now. I think, uh, yes, now you are unmute, on unmute, fantastic. You're on camera. Hello, everyone. Can you see me? Yes, we can see you. Wow, it's wonderful. <laughs> so when we do these um, nature programs, we often conclude with a tea ceremony. And there's always beautiful pieces of art that are nature. So I collected some colored leaves. And um, I also brought some of my own print work um, on fabric and birch bark. Um, some of my own art that's nature based. So what we have here today is cedar tea made from my favorite um, trees that are down, they live down by the river. I can hear my voice. Maybe, Avenia, can you mute me on the other computer? I thought I had, but I guess I can kind of hear myself. So. You, are mute, you are muted on my side, but I guess it's the other yeah. side. But don't worry, it sounds really beautiful. It's like a little echo. Okay. <laughs> it sounds great. So, um, so I'd like to offer this, um, this a blessing to the earth as a way to conclude our time that we've spent together. And so I'm going to offer the first cup of tea to the earth with deep gratitude for all her lessons, lessons in interdependence, lessons in resiliency, lessons in the power of rewilding. We thank you. And now I know that you're not here with me and, um, but I will take a sip of this tea for all of us. Mm. 
Mm, it's nice. It has a sweetness and a beautiful aroma. And at this point, I'd just like to say once again, thank you to each and every one of you, and especially Avenia, who organized this Eternal Forest conversation. I'll pass it back to you, Avenia. Mm, thank you, Kari, so much. Thank you. It's really beautiful and wonderful. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge and say that um, the process of the tea making and offering it to the land and to the circle of all beings and drinking it together. It's also one of my practices that I do when I do eternal forest experiences, also from local plants, herbs and trees. And I feel really deep resonance in this moment. And I just wanted to share, I have a lot to share from today. It's, I, I feel um, incredibly emotional right now, but what I wanted to say um, is that moment when you said that we are not there with you, but you sipped tea for us. I actually took a little sip from my tea and I closed my eyes. I, I felt in this moment that our teas from all of us, they have different contents. They have different plants right now. However, I felt that the water is the same, the water of this planet and it's completely interconnected. So that water that we have in our tea, it connects us together in this circle. And I think it's incredibly powerful moment to be doing that together on this virtual space and also hoping and imagining how one day we can all be in the same sacred space and sacred circle in the forest together. And also I wanted to just express immense gratitude that you managed to do this conversation on Zoom virtually from your forest because it just takes me all the way to the beauties of that ecosystem, that world where trees are changing color because that's the world I knew from my childhood. And I know that a lot of you here from Canada, but also we probably visited places where trees change color a lot. And I very rarely see it these days. So it makes me feel incredibly excited and empowered about that change of season. And of course, we're also approaching the day and the time of ancestors very soon, the 31st of October. And I hope that you are going to celebrate that day. And I'm personally going to Jerez in the north of Portugal where trees change color to celebrate that time. So yes, thank you so much everybody for your presence. Uh, if you have a message, a photo to send and you're happy to share it, with the rest of the community, please send me a message. And um, thank you so much, Kari, for this amazing, beautiful practice that you shared with us and your <clears throat> incredible story. I know that it inspired so many of us on so many different levels. And yes, I just hope to continue. I see you all physically soon, otherwise on the 17th of November in another incredibly inspiring conversation, Eternal Forest. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Kenya and Kari. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Kenya. Thank you, Kari. Bye. Thank, thank you, you so to much. Kari, all, all of you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Bye.